Hey, what you doing? Researching WM stock. But isn't that a garbage company? What is up, everybody? Joseph Hadaway here. And what you just saw there is the first part of my 2033 goal to start every video with a completely original joke. All right, so what makes somebody want to invest in a trash or a garbage company like Waste Management, WM, whatever, anyway? Well, you can argue a few things. You could say they've got solid revenue growth year over year. Their stock has a low beta lower than the market, so it's at least theoretically less volatile than the average. Or you could say that they're in a very safe line of business as long as humanity makes trash, then they've got a revenue source. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna be focusing on one reason why somebody might invest in WM that isn't any of those reasons, and we're talking about their quarterly dividend payments. As a quick disclaimer, um, anything I said here about WM is not investment advice. I do not hold any shares of waste management directly, only through broad market index funds such as VTI. Always do your own research. All right, back to it though, starting off with the basics, what's a dividend? In short, make it easy, dividends are cash payments to shareholders, usually quarterly, but sometimes yearly, biannually, or if you're realty income and your ticker's O, then it's monthly. And a lot of people really seem to like that, but I, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. So when a company has too much money that it can't reasonably spend on growth, they're gonna issue cash payments to shareholders, and that's that's dividends. So then who usually invests for dividends? Well, if you listen to traditional financial advice, they're gonna tell you that dividend investing is solely for retired or near retirement, and that's traditional retirements, so we're talking 59 and a half to 67 plus year old individuals who can't really work or you know are retired and don't work that need that extra stream of income that they can count on every month every quarter to help them in retirement pay for expenses but if traditional financial advice was the end-all be-all and was always correct in every situation then i wouldn't be doing this would i all right so because we fire devotees are known for spitting in the face of traditional finance let's let's talk about it do dividends belong in your fire portfolio or counter that can a dividend portfolio help you fire? Well, the answer to that is somewhere between maybe not and probably. There's never a set answer for anything in the financial world. Let me explain. When looking at your fire number, the number that you need to reach to retire early, there's two main ways of thinking about it. Number one is a portfolio value, and number two is an income. Starting off with your portfolio value or your net worth. Someone who is pursuing fire, in this case, we'll call it the first way is looking to use the 4% rule to retire early. And then, you know, they might make a statement of like, once my stock portfolio hits $1.2 million, I can retire early. Short, sweet, to the point. In this way, they're thinking of using the 4% rule to retire early, that I'm gonna sum this up super basically. I may even do a longer video on it later. You take 4% of the value of a portfolio at retirement, and you take that much out, that much out each year. So going back to my example, in a $1.2 million portfolio, 4% of that, they're gonna take $48,000 out every single year, theoretically for 25 years, or possibly even a little more with market growth. If this is your plan to retire, nothing wrong with it, definitely works, but you're gonna to need to build a very heavily growth-focused portfolio that traditional dividend-paying stocks may not fit into as well. All right, and then we can move on to the second way of thinking about your FIRE number, and that's in terms of income or cash flow. If this is the way you're thinking, you might make a statement like, I can retire early as soon as my monthly passive income hits $5,000 a month or $60,000 for a year. So if you subscribe to this line of thinking like I do, you're thinking a lot about passive income, side hustles, semi-passive income, whatever it takes to get that monthly income, I'm going to use that word a hundred times, up every single month. So you're probably focusing very heavily on things like real estate, um, starting a business, growing it, and outsourcing it, or, you know, dividends. Focusing solely on that last one, if you wanted to generate income from your portfolio but not sell any of your holdings, dividend income's where it's at, and a dividend portfolio could definitely help you get there. All right, as I've talked about a few times on this channel before, I'm a pretty big advocate of cash flow fire, which is what I'm calling the second method. As such, a large portion of my portfolio is heavily invested in dividend paying stocks, but more so dividend paying ETFs. In short, I plan on using that cash flow from my stock portfolio to help me retire early. 
All right, so we're looking at the benefits of a dividend portfolio. They're pretty obvious. Firstly, I get quarterly, monthly, however, if I ladder my dividends, monthly guaranteed income without having to lift a finger. In my opinion, dividends are the only true form of passive income in the world. And on top of that, I'm getting that income and I never have to sell anything. Added benefit then, there are several different programs that will allow me to take a loan and use my stock portfolio as collateral. So I can take that same portfolio and get kind of a double income thing going on if I take the loan and invest it in another cash flowing asset. And as such, if I plan to do something like that, it makes sense to keep my portfolio value high so I don't want to sell. Secondly, in almost all instances, dividend income is taxed at a lower rate than regular nine to five W2 income. Of course, I'm speaking solely here in the US. I don't know any other country's tax laws well enough to speak about that. But for example, if you make $40,000 at your nine to five job and I bring home $40,000 in dividends, after taxes, I'm gonna have more money because my dividends are taxed at a lower rate. Despite all the good, there are some downsides as well. To start, my if with a dividend portfolio, my income is in somebody else's hands. What do I mean by that? I mean that I am not the CEO of any of these companies. I am not a member of their executive board. Therefore, I don't get to make any decisions about the dividend payment. Dividend payments can, are, and are regularly raised, slashed, especially in a recession environment. I mean, personally, I feel that I diversify a lot of that risk away by holding primarily broad market-based ETFs, but I'd be willing to say that the risk isn't still there. And then, of course, there's the issue of the value of my portfolio and how much money I have to put into it. Just, at least theoretically, and in my opinion and practice as well, a dividend investor is going to have to put in more money than a growth investor will to get the same amount of income. Let me, let, let's, let's run an example on that. Let's say that you have a million dollar portfolio. For a growth investor who's looking to use the 4% rule, their yearly income off of that $1 million portfolio will be roughly 40,000, 4% of a million. All right, now let's say that my dividend portfolio has a yield of 2%, which some of you may argue is a little low, some of you may argue is a little high. It makes numbers easy, get off my back. That would mean that $1 million portfolio only yields $20,000 in yearly income from the exact same million dollars. 1 million times 2%. So at least in this example, in theory, the dividend investor would have to have a $2 million portfolio, double the growth investor to get the exact same level of income. Now, those numbers aren't entirely accurate. I, for the most part, made that up off the top of my head when I was writing the scripts. Do some research. Don't write off divid a dividend portfolio just because of that example, but it's definitely something to think about and something you have to take an account when you're deciding your fire plan. The good news is you don't have to pick just one plan. I hold dividend stocks, I hold dividend ETFs, I hold growth ETFs all in my portfolio. There's nothing wrong with holding both to cover all your bases. I'm just gonna sum all of this up with one quick final thought. If you're looking for a fully passive portfolio that you can draw income from without ever having to sell your assets, dividends are it. They can, they're going to help me fire and they can definitely do the same thing for you. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your favorite dividend stock or ETF down in the comments below. I, I want to hear what you invest in. What's your largest holding? If you like content like this based around personal finance, side hustles, investing, and the fire movement, while you're down there, leave me that comment. Go and hit the subscribe button too. It really helps me grow and I really appreciate it. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next week.